In this video, I'm going to be making Lucy's Peanut Butter Brownies. These are from the Magnolia Table Cookbook, a collection of recipes for gathering volume two uh, by Joanna Gaines. So first of all, I'm going to tell you all the ingredients you're going to need. There's three uh, different sets of ingredients, once for the brownies, the topping, and then the frosting, but I'll tell you as we go along. So for the brownies themselves, you, it says you need cooking spray. If you don't have parchment paper to line your pan, you can have cooking spray. I'm using parchment paper to line my pan. Uh, you need one cup or two sticks of unsalted butter. I have two sticks right there. A third cup of unsweetened cocoa. Two cups sugar, granulated sugar. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour. A half teaspoon kosher salt, four eggs, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. For the topping, it's real simple. You need one jar, one 16 ounce jar of creamy peanut butter. It does say creamy. Our favorite is Jif, we, so you can use a 16 ounce, whatever brand you want to use. And then for the frosting, you will need one stick of unsalted butter, 10 large marshmallows. These are normal size marshmallows. I'm assuming that's what she means by the large ones and not, you know, they have the, um, like the super big ones that you can take camping and they're like as big as a graham cracker square. I don't think she means those. I think she just means regular marshmallows. So 10 large marshmallows, uh, four cups of powdered sugar, and more if you if for a thicker frosting she says a third cup of whole milk and a fourth cup of unsweetened cocoa powder so you're going to have cocoa in the brownies and in the frosting so the first thing you want to do is you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees you want to spray a 9 by 13 inch pan like i said i'm using parchment paper so i didn't have to have the spray if you want to use the spray go ahead um, but the first thing you want to do is you want to take your two sticks of butter and you're going to put them in a little saucepan and we're going to let the butter melt so once your butter melts over low heat you want to add in your cocoa powder and just whisk this together. And once it's all whisked together, uh, I still had some butter in the bottom there. Uh, once it's whisked together and your butter is completely melted, uh, we're going to let this set uh, to the side for five minutes to cool. So now we want to come over to our stand mixer and you want to combine together the sugar, flour, and salt. Now the mixture that we just heated on the stove, the butter and the cocoa, we're gonna combine this on medium speed until it is well blended. It, it says it will take about two minutes. Point you want to slowly add the eggs and vanilla until it's well incorporated. We're going to pour that mixture into our prepared pan. And I'm going to spread them out when they get in here. And then these are going to bake on 350 for 20 to 22 minutes. I'm gonna set my timer for 21 minutes and uh, then we'll be back. My 
brownies were in for a total of 25 minutes. Uh, I, you can see that there's a couple little holes in there because at 21 minutes I checked on them and they were still, you could tell because it was a, like a darker color in the center, they were still a little bit um, jiggly and too moist. So uh, 25 minutes was the time for me. So what you wanna do is you want to set a timer for 30 minutes and let these cool for just 30 minutes and then we'll be back. Our brownies have been cooling for half an hour, so now I'm gonna take my whole jar of peanut butter, and you want to put it in a microwavable uh, bowl, and put the whole jar in here, and then we're gonna heat it up in 15 second increments until it is melted. So heat it for, for 15 seconds at first, and then stir it to distribute the, the heat, and then heat it again and uh, until it's a liquid. Okay, I heated my peanut butter up for, it was a total of 30 seconds. So I did 15 and I started and I did another 15. So now you can see I'm just gonna pour all of this peanut butter out on top of my brownies and spread it out. And then we're gonna put this in the freezer for 30 minutes. Brownies only have about five minutes left in the freezer to complete the uh, first 30 minute freezing. Uh, so now we're gonna start working on the frosting. So it says in a medium saucepan. Well, you're gonna have to put all this, this is, this is four cups of powdered sugar. I don't know that that'll fit in a medium saucepan. Maybe it will. It just doesn't seem like it will to me. So I got out a bigger pan. I mean, ultimately, who cares what size pan you use, right? But what you want to do is you want to melt the butter and marshmallows over medium heat. you want to add the rest of your ingredients, the milk and the cocoa and the powdered sugar. And it said if you want it to be uh, thicker, you know, this is for the frosting. If you want it thicker, then we'll have to add more powdered sugar. So, put that like that. I can't imagine wanting that any thicker. I think that looks good. And while I've been doing this, my timer, my 30 minute timer went off for the freezer. So I'm gonna take this off the heat and I'll be right back. So now we're gonna take that chocolate mixture and pour it over the top of the peanut butter mixture that's been in the freezer. spread this out over the peanut butter and then this is going to go back into the freezer for an additional 30 minutes. been in for another 30 minutes to help the chocolate set so I'm gonna pull them out and I'm impressed that it, it came out that easy so now you it says you can cut them into 24 pieces
Okay, these, uh, they're called Lucy's Peanut Butter Brownies. It says Best Friend Brownies. This is what my friend's mom, Lucy, calls the sweet treat. Anytime a friend of hers is feeling down or could just use a little something sweet, she makes a batch. Over the years, many of her friends have asked her for the recipe so they could do the same. I'm grateful to share it here as I'm convinced there is no better match than peanut butter and chocolate. So, and the only other thing she says that you'll want to know is it says keep these refrigerated. So, once you cut them up, keep them refrigerated. Well, it's just raw peanut butter, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so it yes. probably gets mushy if you don't. You, Go ahead. Okay. You grab whatever way you want. Whichever one you want. Uh, I'm going. Go for it. And you smell the peanut butter. Oh yeah, it's strong. Chocolate also smells pretty strong too though. The texture is great. Mm. My favorite part. Is that chocolate on the top? On the top. <laughs> yes. I love the chocolate on the top. It tastes like one of the old, like the cooked chocolate fudge we used to make at Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's that texture. It's kind of got that gritty, sugary texture. Mm -hmm. Kevin's right. Mm. So you have the chocolate fudge texture on top, and then that really cre uh, creamy peanut butter in the center. Mm -hmm. And then... A the, soft like cake-like brownie on the bottom. It's really good. It is... They are really good to go. Absolutely over the top sweet. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's sweet. This is for people who like very, very, very incredibly sweet desserts. It's perfect for us. Um, I do understand why she says to keep it refrigerated. I'm sure it's about that peanut butter. That peanut butter, if you left them laying out at room temperature, it would probably start to ooze, I would think. Yeah, at least it would be uh, extra soft. Uh-huh. I don't know. Because the brownies themselves are cooked, mm -hmm. peanut butter is not going to get that much soft. I don't know why they say refrigerate. Maybe just keep the top soft or firm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Now, I'm wondering if you couldn't do the exact same recipe with Biscoff. Oh, instead of peanut butter? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could. Put the Lotus Biscoff uh, jar of that mm -hmm. in the you center. You can even do crunchy if you want. Well, to she peanuts, said you know? creamy, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, I don't know. I don't know, like the Lotus, they have a crunchy version too, which I'm crazy about. But I don't know if when you melt it in the microwave, it would make a full... I don't know. I, I just don't know. Uh, I definitely think it would be worth trying it though, but these are absolutely yep. incredible. Yeah, I like the smooth peanut butter anyway. They go, it goes really well with this. There's nothing to chew on or crunch through. It's, it's really nice. This is uh, as, as good as any bakery item. Like you could go in any bakery and get one of these and, and it's you're not going to get any better. And you've done it yourself at home. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think excellent. it's absolutely delicious. Did you get an edge? Or did you just um, get a serving? The edges have a little, uh, they're a little denser on the edge, so you get a little, little bit more of a crunch. Mm -hmm. I like that. No, I just got to set up. Yeah, I got the edge piece. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it worked perfect with parchment paper. Hmm? Because she had you spraying the pan. Yeah, we haven't sprayed pans in a long time, really. Most of the time we don't. I don't like to, because uh, you always get the first few pieces just don't come out as clean. And with <coughs> parchment paper, every single piece is pretty. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather use parchment paper, but it worked great. Yep. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.